Hello, and welcome back to night three of our 17-part series, An Evening with AP Biology. This evening, we're going to be talking about cells, and we're going to talk about prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Let us start simple with prokaryotes. And in the prokaryotic cell family, bacteria make up many, many, many of those prokaryotic cells. A prokaryotic cell will have a cell membrane, DNA, a cytoplasm, and ribosomes. They may have a cell wall. So always remember that all cells will have a cell membrane, cytoplasm, and ribosomes. In the case of prokaryotes, or in the case of bacteria, they're going to have a circular DNA. Again, some will have a cell wall. And they will not have any what are known as membrane-bound organelles. So they're going to have a nucleoid region. But they're not going to have a true nucleus because a nucleus is membrane-bound. They're not going to have endoplasmic reticulum. They're not going to have Golgi. They're not going to have lysosomes. They're not going to have any of that. So if you look at a very simple prokaryotic cell, they may have a flagella. It would be that right there. This particular example does have a cell wall, and your DNA is in the nucleoid region. Your plasma membrane or your cell membrane found there. Ribosomes, of course, to make proteins, which we're going to talk about very soon, and your cytoplasm. So that would be your basic prokaryotic cell. Notice no membrane-bound organelles. Ribosomes are not membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotic cells are going to be a little bit different. They're going to have some of the same things. They're going to have cell membranes, and they're going to have DNA, and they're going to have ribosomes. But they're going to have what are known as membrane-bound organelles. So they're going to be encased in your standard lipid bilayer. And it's going to be all about compartmentalization. And that is going to increase efficiency of the cell. Plant cells, in addition to many of the things an animal cell has, will contain chloroplasts, which are going to do photosynthesis, which we will talk about in tomorrow evening's discussion, and a cell wall, which is primarily made up of a non-living non cellulose. So let's start off with the cell membrane. We kind of talked about that in the last discussion. That is going to be a phospholipid or a lipid bilayer, and that surrounds the cell and controls what enters and leaves. The nucleus is where the DNA is going to be contained. In the event that mRNA needs to get created, that will also happen in the nucleus. Your cytoplasm is jelly-like material containing the organelles, things like lysosomes and rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. Lysosomes are going to be organelles with digestive enzymes, and in the case of a white blood cell, those digestive enzymes may be used to break down foreign invaders, or a cell may go through apoptosis by releasing those digestive enzymes and ultimately ending that cell's life cycle. Your rough endoplasmic reticulum we talked about in the last evening, and that could be studded with ribosomes, and since it has ribosomes, there will be protein synthesis that will go on and transporting of those proteins in vesicles out. Smooth ER is going to help in detoxification. Now your liver is a major detoxifying organ, so cells of your liver will have a large amount of smooth ER. Your Golgi apparatus, that's going to modify your proteins, and they're, those proteins that will get modified will either be incorporated into the cell membrane or leave the cell. We talked about that in the endomembrane system. Your vacuole is going to be for storing of food and water within a cell. Mitochondria is the site of respiration, which we will talk about. And chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis. Both mitochondria and chloroplasts will be mentioned tomorrow night. Let's kind of look at a plant cell first. And you will know this is a plant cell because it's square. And that's usually a good giveaway. The other huge giveaway will be your cell wall. And the other huge giveaway will be your chloroplast. Now your chloroplasts are probably going to be near the edge of the cell, and that would make sense because that is where the sunlight will be able to penetrate the quickest. To have it in the center of the cell would, would be inefficient. They will have a large sensual vacuole, which will probably have water in it in the case of a plant cell, because water is needed in order to do photosynthesis. 
they will have a nucleus. That nucleus will have DNA. It will have a nucleolus. That's kind of like that darkened region where ribosomes will be created. Ribosomes will be found both attached to the rough ER and free floating in the cytoplasm. Your Golgi is usually right next to that in order to take your proteins and modify them. Mitochondria is where you're going to produce your ATP. You're going to do that by the process of cell respiration, which again we will talk about tomorrow night. And your cytosol and plasma membrane, which also other all cells have. Moving over to oh peroxisome, it's going to break or help break down peroxide. If you look over in the animal cell, we have many of the same things, except we do not have a cell wall and we do not have chloroplasts. You will, however, see these things called a centriole, which will not be present in a plant cell, and it's going to help in cell division. The rest of the stuff, however, is pretty similar. You're going to have your nuclear envelope, your DNA, your nucleolus, your peroxisomes, your rough ER, your smooth ER. You will have vacuoles, but they will be much smaller. Mitochondria, cytosol or cytoplasm, Golgi, lysosome, and of course your plasma or cell membrane. That is how plant cells and animal cells are similar, and that is how they are different. So if you look at them next to each other, you can see similarities and differences. So quick recap, prokaryotic cells, simple, no membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotic cells are more complex. They're going to be able to compartmentalize. They are going to have membrane-bound organelles that are going to do very specific jobs that will help your eukaryotic cell perform its function much more efficiently. So hopefully that was helpful, and we will see you again tomorrow night.